boys what's good it's herm i'm here today with some more draft content here to give you my top 10 centers in the 2022 nba draft i want to go through each position but i think the center spot is one of the most intriguing ones so i decided i'd start with center work my way back to point guard but i'm going to give you my top 10 centers today uh, i just put out a mock draft yesterday with trades it's doing pretty well so if you guys enjoy draft content be sure to check that out but before we get into it think about subscribing it's free it's easy if you don't like the content you know as unsubscribe later that's fine but without further ado let's just get into the prospects so at number 10 i have center of course he's a center travion williams out of purdue one of the most dominant players in college basketball this year and the way he's built physically size wise reminds me a lot of one of his uh well, not his teammates, but a guy that played at Purdue also, Caleb Swanigan, who didn't work out in the NBA, but that was more because of kind of eating problems, mentality type stuff than anything else. Williams, six foot ten, two 270 pounds. That's right, 270. This dude is imposing. He's a physical presence, 21 years old, but a senior, a really young senior. Will turn 22 before the year is over, but 21 years old on draft night. A very, very good rebounder as well as being really physical in the post as a scorer not afraid to get you know kind of physical down there throw some bodies around to be able to score has some stretch five potential we saw a little bit of that at Purdue but not a ton of it but I think it's there as well as being a really good playmaker without you know Ivy being a great point guard himself Ivy's more of a shooting guard than anything else Williams and him worked really well together with Williams ability to pass the ball be a great screener for him work off the screen with Ivy so we've already seen how well he can work with an explosive of guard i think draft range wise he's probably going second round or undrafted but if you can get this guy undrafted he's a guy that's going to make your team like this guy is an nba level player i think in the summer league he's going to look really impressive and with his physicality his rebounding all teams love players like this and i think he can be a good pro at number nine i have khalifa diop out of senegal six foot eleven 230 pounds only 20 years old really really adept at drawing fouls is one of the best prospects in this year's draft to drawing fouls it's one of those things that the nba you gotta have kind of a knack for it but some guys just don't have it but diop does really good at drawing fouls getting to the line and converting them at a pretty good clip as well really good athlete as far as 6 11 players go he's really solid as an athlete moves pretty fluidly whether it be catching lobs you know dribbling up the court you can do all that stuff a pretty good post defender but at the moment not a great rim protector like he's going to be able to make your shots difficult in the post but he's probably not going to block a lot of shots more likely than not that's one of the things he has to work on is improving as a shot blocker rather than just a, a shot effector you know but pretty good low post score as well you can put him on the block and he'll be solid there this is one of those international guys that's a little bit more of a prospect but over time you might get really good a, re- a really good reward here for what you're drafting because he's probably going second round i don't think he'll go undrafted but there's always a chance but wherever he gets drafted he probably comes off the bench for a couple of years you know kind of stashes there on the team maybe works in the g league a little bit but over time with his athleticism with his kind of knack for for scoring as well as drawing fouls i think he'll be a good nba player at number eight i have jalen williams out of arkansas a guy that i think is pretty underrated uh, i like to watch utility sports a lot shout out to them he was on their sleepers video they really like jalen williams over there and i think he's a good player six foot ten 240 pounds only a sophomore this year arkansas so he did play with moses moody a couple of years ago in his freshman year but as a guy that looked really good this year is basically the primary guy for arkansas they had another guy i'm gonna blank on his name but he was a guard but jalen williams in the post was dominant with his ability to rebound you know be a really solid athlete work off his screens catch lobs finish in the post is a really solid low post score good rebounder you know maybe someday he's like a seven eight rebound per game guy in the nba really good athlete and draws charges really well Uh, this is a guy that i think could easily you know at some point be a starter in the nba because you look at guys out there like mason Plumley, just to just to say one chris boucher is starting at center sometimes like these are guys that aren't great players but their ability to rebound and just do kind of the dirty work is kind of similar to jalen williams but he's a better athlete than the so i think his athleticism will help him 
probably a second round pick but as a guy that i think you know won't be a star but can be a valuable role player to a team i think if anyone is the herb jones of this year's draft i think could be jalen williams at number seven i have ismail kamagate out of france you know played for paris's basketball team 6 11 225 is 21 years old a little older for an international prospect but i like him pretty athletic good off ball score so he works really well in motion offenses off the ball so you know kind of just knowing where to fill the lane cutting and you know getting second chance points as well good athlete really good shot blocker that's one of the biggest parts of his game the biggest selling point is his ability to block shots as well as having a good motor it seems like he's always giving his all out there you know working hard all the time just running up and down the court not afraid to get out on the break that's a good thing about him too i think maybe he goes late first but more likely than not i think he's probably a second round pick at number six i have walker kessler out of auburn a guy that's dropping down people's draft boards a little bit was once thought of as kind of like a mid to late first round pick but with his kind of slowness laterally not the not the quickest guy out there as well as kind of limited offensive versatility i think that's what's dropping him but seven foot one 250 pounds is a big imposing physical force in his freshman year at north carolina didn't really get a lot of burn but showed good flashes when he was there but his second year transferred to auburn played with jabari smith jr and walker kessler won national defensive player of the year average almost five blocks a game phenomenal shot blocker elite shot blocker that's the best part of his game really good strength wise he's not going to get pushed around in the post really solid screener think kind of steven adams-esque with his ability to screen and a good post defender you're just not going to be able to do a lot of work on him in the post so if you're looking for a really good defensive big i think walker kessler is the pick but he's really limited offensively and that makes me have some questions i think he probably goes either late first round or early second but I, i've seen some mocks with him going first i think there's a chance he does at number five i have Christian Coloco out of Arizona, a guy that's rising a little bit because of how well he shot in the star drill at the combine. Throughout you know, college, he wasn't really a three-point shooter at all, never really hit that, but showed at the combine ability to shoot a little bit. So with stretch potential, I think that's a big you know plus for his game and his draft prospect going forward. Seven foot one, 230 pounds. A 22-year-old junior was there for three years, but just got better every year. Really good shot blocker. You could say he's a gifted shot blocker very good athlete you know he runs up and down the court really well but can also get really high at seven foot one you're going to be able to throw him lobs he's a very good vertical threat you know good off ball score really good playmaker for others has some comparisons to clint capella but imagine clint capella is a little more athletic i think that's what coloco could be probably not quite the same rebounder but offensively with the pick and roll lobs i think is similar projection wise he probably goes late first uh, that's where i think he's gonna go maybe early second but for me he feels like a first round pick at number four this is a guy i'm really high on high on than higher on than some other people but kai soto out of the philippines seven foot three 240 pounds with comparisons to porzingis out of the nbl only 20 years old good floor spacer shot 39 percent from three this year in the nbl and 50 percent from the field efficiency that's basically unheralded for nbl prospects we just don't see them shoot that well it's it's really uncommon he's a really good shot blocker you know affecting shots blocking shots whatever it be average one block per game in the nbl and only 15 minutes so if he's playing the same as other guys you know maybe two plus blocks per game for soto very mobile for his size moves really well for a guy that's seven foot three you just don't really see tall guys move like that outside of porzingis that's why i think it's a pretty good comparison as well as he's a really good interior score and a vertical threat you can throw him lobs or he can finish in the post for me i think he goes somewhere in the range of like 20 to 40 that's where he should go really high upside guy maybe he doesn't turn out to be anything but his ceiling is really high so i think he's a guy worth taking a flyer on in the first round but you guys let me know your thoughts on soto I know he's a big channel favorite as well, so let me know your thoughts on him, but he's my fourth best center, which is higher than a lot of people would have him. At number three, I have Mark Williams out of Duke. Really one of the biggest winners of the combine, testing at seven foot two, was only thought to be seven feet tall, with a nine foot nine standing reach would be the highest in the NBA from the day he gets drafted, as well as a seven foot seven wingspan, great length. 20 years old, sophomore at Duke. Is one of the guys that, you know, usually duke players go as freshmen but he stayed another year and really it was great for him because it really upped his upped his draft 
you know, kind of potential because he might have been late first round last year, maybe early second. But this year he's going to go lottery. He's going to be a lottery pick. Great shot blocker. I think it was somewhere around three blocks a game this year for Duke. Really good rebounder. Great athlete as well. And we saw in the tournament, really good at scoring in the post and catching lobs. Kind of looked dominant as a physical offensive force in the NCAA tournament. And he just keeps rising up draft boards. And I think he's going to continue to. Is a guy I really like and deserves to be a lottery pick. At number two, I have Jalen Duran out of Memphis. You know, really physical, imposing big. Six foot ten, 240 pounds, only 18 years old, is the youngest prospect we've talked about at the center. A freshman at Memphis. Really good rim protector. You know, he's going to be able to get in there and affect shots from day one as a rookie. Really solid athlete. Might be the best athlete of all the center prospects with his ability to move laterally run pretty quickly for a big guy and get up with a good vertical as well so physical post score has some comparisons to bam at a bio with his defensive ability because i think he will have the ability to guard on the perimeter as well but can score in the post can rebound with the best of them i think he's probably a top 10 pick but you might see him around 11 12 13 in that range as well is a bona fide lottery pick and really had a good year at memphis this year and at number one this is no surprise it is chet holmgren out of gonzaga some people might consider him a power forward but for these rankings i i think it's best to consider him a center just because of his size and you know a little bit of the play style but seven feet tall 195 pounds 20 years old really great at spacing the floor shot 38 39 percent from three this year gonzaga something like that really good court vision as a playmaker just really understands where people are going to be and you know how to pass them the ball and pass other people open really good as a playmaker as a shooter as a rim protector you know can block shots with his amazing length you know or whether it be just affecting players you know with his defense as well because he's a pretty good defender overall and really the only three level score of all these center prospects he can hit at the rim mid-range and from three is really basically the only center guy that can do that maybe soto has that upside but for me right now chat holmgren is the only bona fide three level score in this center group for this draft class and he will be a top three pick he's one of those three guys with him smith and bancaro are going to be top three picks but chet is my number one as he is pretty much everybody else's let me know your thoughts on this on this year's center prospects hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did think about liking think about subscribing if you're new but again trying to hit 2k by the end of the month i think we can hit that thanks for watching i hope you really enjoyed that's going to be it for me have a good rest of your day peace